A line segment is one of the most basic SDF primitives. But it's also one of the most versatile, because it can be used to model all sorts of things, such as the legs of an insect, the stem of a mushroom, or the leaves of mossy grass. So, let's derive a compact formula for the distance to a line segment. Alright, let's define our segment by its two vertices, A and B. There are three different regions that naturally arise when computing the distance from a point P to the segment. If P is in region number 1, the distance to the segment is just the distance from P to the vertex B. Similarly, if P is in region number 2, the distance to the segment is just the distance from P to the vertex A. Now, if P is in the region number 3, the distance from P to the segment is the distance to the closest point in it, Q, which is somewhere in between A and B. We can define a parameter H that tells us where exactly Q is between A and B. For example, if H equals a half, Q will be exactly between A and B. For H equals a third, Q would be somewhere closer to A. This Q that I painted here is probably closer to H equals 0.8. Now, of course, if h equals 0, q will be exactly at a, and h equals 1 corresponds to q being exactly at b. We can find h by tracing a line that passes through p and is perpendicular to the segment. This tracing operation is actually a projection. In particular, we have to project the vector pa into ba, which we can do through a dot product. The dot product will factor in both the length of ba and PA. But since we only need the physical dimensions of the projection PA, we will have to divide the dot product by the length BA. Now that we have the physical length of the projection, which goes from 0 to the full length BA, we can normalize it to the range 0 to 1 by dividing it by BA once more. This has the very convenient consequence of cancelling out the square root involved in the length of BA. Basically, h can be computed with just two dot products and one division. Now, we can combine these three expressions into a single one, for the sake of reducing branches. We did this as well when we computed the SDF of a box in another video. Now, the trick is to notice that if we are computing h for points p in region number 1, then we will get values bigger than 1, since p will project into a point q which is above b. So, if we force h to be 1 when the computed value is bigger than 1, then we will successfully recreate the distance to the vertex b. Similarly, for points in the region number 2, the parameter h will take negative values, since the point p will project into a point q which is below point a. So, we can get rid of expressions 1 and 2 if we compute h as usual, and then we clamp it to the region 0 to 1. We can do this by computing h as the mean of 1 and the max of 0 and the projection that we had. This allows us to have a single expression, without any branching or if statements in the code that implements this function, which is great. At this point, I want to address a small question that some people had in the video of the SDF of a box, where we were using the max operation to avoid branches as well. Now, the max operation is not implemented with an if internally. Modern hardware implement the mean and the max just like they do addition or subtraction in the silicon and probably with some combinatorial circuit. So yes, we are indeed getting rid of branching when using the mean and the max approach instead of an if. Now, not only we are pleasing the hardware here, we are also, in my opinion, generating a more compact and therefore elegant expression for the SDF. So, let's put a nice big square around the expression to celebrate our achievement. Next, now that we have the SDF to a line segment, we can give it some thickness by using the rounding operation that we talked about in the previous video. And since H provides a canonical parametrization of the segment, we can use it to colorize, but also to modulate the amount of rounding. For example, we can apply some funny sine waves 
or a fall off or any other thing you can think of, really. Beware though that most of these modulations can break the metric. Now, of course, note that nowhere in the code we are explicitly using the x, y or z coordinates or a cross product or anything that would lock us in a given number of dimensions. We did all of our operations only using dot products and distances, which generalize naturally to any number of dimensions. What this means is that the same expression that we got works in 3D. Lastly, the code for the SDF of a line segment is a direct translation of this expression. And I've got one last thing to say. It can come handy sometimes to specialize the SDF to the case where the segment is set at the origin and pointing straight up. In that case, a equals zero, the length of the segment is just a constant, L, and the vector BA becomes the zero L zero vector. All of this reduces the dot product in the projection to a single multiplication, and the whole thing simplifies to this. And this is interesting, because if we ignore the min and max surgery, the second line of code is just the SDF of a sphere. So in fact, there is a useful interpretation to be done here, which is that the min and the max operations are implementing an extrusion to the sphere. Actually, this is the elongation operator, as I called it in my website, and I will leave a link in the description as well. This means that we can replace, of course, the sphere with any other primitive, say a torus, and get an elongated torus or a cylinder. Or if we rotate the torus, we could get a paperclip. So this technique is very useful. But I digress, I only wanted to talk about line segments in this video. So thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. Um, you are enabling me to make these videos and I hope everyone enjoyed this one. So see you next time.